Hi, my name is Bo Chen. I'm a postdoc researcher at the University of Adelaide. Today, I'm going to talk about a recent AI competition, the Kelvin Spot Geo Challenge, which was co-organized with the Advanced Concept Team from the European Space Agency. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors, Innovol Technologies, Intrack Solutions, and Smartset CRC for their contribution to the competition. I'll talk about the challenge from the following aspects. The motivation, the dataset we developed for this challenge, the evaluation metric, and the competition results. So what is SpotGeo? In short, the task of SpotGeo is to detect satellites in or near the geostationary orbit from images that are taken on the ground. Why is SpotGeo important? We know that today, there are thousands of space assets orbiting the Earth, including satellites and space stations, which amount to trillions of dollars of investment. Monitoring these resident space objects in the geostationary ring is an important aspect in achieving space situational awareness, which is crucial towards alleviating the risk of space asset destruction. An important aspect of SSA is detecting and confirming the existence of the thousands of objects in space. However, ground-based geo-object detection is challenging. A fundamental reason behind the difficulty of this problem is the extreme distance between the observer and the target object. In the case of the employed camera, having an angular pixel size of about 4.5 arc seconds and considering the distance between the ground level and geo. Each pixel corresponds to an arc length of about 800 meters at the geo ring. This makes targets of interest no larger than one pixel in area in the image. Other nuisance factors also contribute to the difficulty of this problem, such as cloud cover, atmospheric or weather effects, light pollution, etc., etc. Another motivation for this challenge is that there is a lack of publicly available dataset in this field of research, which inhibits the developing and testing of machine learning algorithms for the task. To address these issues, by organizing the Spot Geo Challenge, we hope to invite the world's machine learning and computer vision experts to develop advanced and effective methods for this problem, so that we can establish to what extent images coming from a low-cost ground-based telescope can be used to detect geo-objects. By assembling and releasing the competition dataset, we also seek to spur more efforts from the community on automated pipelines for the optical detection of satellites, and also enable objective benchmarking of already existing methods. The Spot Geo Dataset the dataset images were acquired using a ground-based, low-cost CMOS sensor during nighttime. Because objects in GEO travel synchronously with the Earth's rotation, they appear as motionless point-like objects for a fixed observer on Earth. On the other hand, stars appear as streaks due to their constant sidereal motion caused by the Earth's rotation. We can also see that there are many nuisance factors captured in the image, such as clouds or light pollution, sensor noise. Sometimes we will also have star occlusions, that is, when a background star happens to uh, uh, cross a satellite object. In rare cases, we can even see orbital maneuvers conducted by an active geo satellite during capture. Because of all the nuisance factors, detection of objects from a single image will be hard. So to make the problem more feasible, sequences of five images are used to perform multi-frame detection for the spot geo task. The specific data acquisition approach is illustrated in the diagram. Each capture instance uses a sequence of five images of frames. For each frame, a 40 second exposure was used while the camera was kept static on the ground. 
Equivalently, the camera was rotating at sidereal rate during exposure. After each frame had been recorded, the camera was slightly rotated by a constant rotation to observe a slightly different field of view while still maintaining significantly overlapping with the previous field of view. Eventually, this methodology resulted in sequences of five frames, such as those shown in the image. One important result from the sequence capture process is that the camera rotation between consecutive frames in one sequence are identical. This means if the five frames were stacked together, the five locations of a geo-object should form a straight line with a constant distance between each pair of consecutive locations as displayed in the right figure here. This is a useful constraint to be exploited. It helps handling many nuisance factors such as noise, sensor defects, cloud covering, or star occlusion. For example, if the detection result from the five images looks like the figure on the left, one can easily refine it by removing the false detections, which are the three isolated points, and interpreting the missing detection using the line structure. Here are some statistics of the dataset used in the competition. We have captured in total 32,000 images in 6,400 sequences, from which 20% are used as training set and the rest 80% are used as testing set. Note that not all sequences have objects captured in the image. For both training and testing sets, about one-fourth of the sequences has no ground truth object. Evaluation metrics. Participants of the competition are ranked primarily by the F1 score of their predictions. Their prediction errors are only used as a tiebreaker. For each prediction, we first solve the one-to-one -one matching between predictions and gratuitous objects. Such matching can be solved by minimizing the sum of all truncated Euclidean distances of match pairs. We introduce a distance threshold tau, which is the maximum distance for a match pair to be considered as true positive. In the example in the figure, y123 are the gratuitous objects and x1 to x4 are the predictions. The true positive matches are x1, y1 and x2, y2, which leaves predictions x3 and x4 false positives and x and y3 false negative. After counting the true positive, false positive, and false negative for each frame, these numbers are summed over all frames and all test sequences to compute the overall precision and recall, and in turn, the F1 score. Competition results. We have 33 teams participating in the competition from all over the world. This list shows the top 10 teams in terms of the F1 score, but only the top 3 teams were in for the competition prize. The first and second place winners are actually very close, both achieving an F1 score of near 0.95. This F1 score shows that Geo satellites can be detected fairly well using a low-cost ground-based camera. But at the same time, the problem is not trivial and is worth more exploring. In terms of solutions, I will share the top two teams' solutions, which are actually quite different, yet they achieve very similar scores. The first place winners use a three-step pipeline. The pre-processing step performs background removal, estimation of star shifting, and field of view shifting. In the second step, a deep neural network with a UNet-like architecture is trained to detect your objects. In the final step, post-processing are done to refine the results via light detection and trajectory fueling. 
This approach is representative as most teams adopted a somewhat similar pipeline, pre-processing, detection using deep learning, and post-processing utilizing geometry. The second place winner, on the other hand, applies a non-learning approach. They first compute the signal noise ratio of all pixels and then stress holding out all candidate stars and candidate satellites. They then estimate the star shifts and satellite shifts to refine the detection results, which is similar to the post-processing step in the first pipeline. Conclusion the first and foremost message we learn from this challenge is that images obtained from low-cost ground-based cameras can be used to detect orbiting objects very well. This provides a direction of research to further enrich our toolbox for achieving space situational awareness. From the solutions submitted by the participants, we found that most teams follow the three-step pipeline which seems to be the best approach for such tasks so far. We also noted that deep learning methods is popularly used for the detection step, which is not surprising given its popularity and learning power. For more details of the Spot Geo Challenge, please visit the completion page. The dataset we use in the challenge is also publicly available on Zendodo. Thank you.